Hi, my name is Tom Heffel, and this channel is all about helping students learn chemistry. In this video, we're going to kick off a series of equilibrium practice problems. And these problems are going to start out easy and then progressively get more challenging. Okay, So for our first problem, right here is the prompt. If you want to pause the video and write down the prompt into your notebooks, that would be helpful. And when you come back, we'll be working on the problem. Okay, So in this problem, we got 2A plus B yielding C and D. But before we get into the actual problem, I want to explain kind of how an ICE chart works. Okay. Initially, we're going to talk about what ICE stands for. Okay. The I stands for initial. So if we get an initial concentration or pressure, we're going to put that underneath the A, B, C, and D respectively. The C is going to tell you about the change or the shift that's going to occur. Uh, and then the E stands for equilibrium. So after equilibrium is established, we're going to have different concentrations than our initial concentrations because of the shift. Okay. Now, when you're doing these ice charts, okay, it has to be in the units of molarity okay, or some type of pressure unit like ATM or TOR because the equilibrium constant deals with concentration or molarity. Okay. And K sub P deals with pressure. So inside this chart, it always has to be um, either molarity for K sub C or some type of pressure unit for K sub P. So let's go ahead and look and read our prompt. Okay? It says we got 18 moles of A and 10 moles of B in a 2 liter container. So we're going to use the molarity equation, which is moles over the volume in liters. We're going to take each of those moles and we're going to divide it by two liters because in the prompt it says it's in a two liter container. So 18 divided by 2 is going to tell me that my molarity of my A is 9. And then 10 moles divided by 2 is going to tell me that my molarity of B is 5 because 10 divided by 2 is going to be 5. As I continue to read the problem, it says when equilibrium is established, so these are no longer initial positions because it's telling me that equilibrium is established, okay, the concentration of C is 3 molar. So everything in the box is kind of like what the givens are in this particular prompt. And the question is, what is the value of the equilibrium constant? Or what is K sub C? So that's what the question is asking. And my job here is to show you kind of how to use an ice chart and then to calculate the K sub C value. Okay. The prompt didn't say anything about C or D, so we can assume that there's nothing initially about C and D because it was not mentioned in the prompt. So if we have a whole bunch of reactants and no products, we know initially this is going to shift to the right until equilibrium is established. And if we start out with zero and we end up with three, then we know that this changed by three molar. Because if you start at zero and you end at three, we know that the change went up, or that's why I use that plus sign, of three molar. Okay. Well, if this went up a certain amount, if we know the change of one of them, based on stoichiometry, we know the change of all of them. Okay. For example, this is a one-to-one -one ratio, so whatever this went up, then this would have gone down. And of course, here to here is a one-to-two, and this is a one-to-two ratio. And just to show this work, okay, if this was the change, if I had a three molar change, and I'll do this as moles per liter, moles per liter of C. If I do a mole-to-mole -mole conversion, moles of C, the moles of D, well, that's a 1 to 2 ratio. Moles of C to moles of D is a 1 to 2 ratio. 3 times 2 is going to give me 6 as my number. The moles of C cancels out, okay? And I'm left with moles of D per liter, and moles per liter is molarity of D. So we know that this went up 6, and it started at 0. And it ended up at 6, then we can actually figure out the equilibrium position. And we'll do that here in a second. Same thing over here. Okay, I could just change this 3 moles of C. I could change this to uh, A because 
the mole ratio between C and A is also 1 to 2, so this is going to go down 6 molarity. Okay? So once again, what we did here is we saw that this changed by 3, and as soon as we know the change of 1, we can figure out the change of all the other ones using the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. Like this is 1 to 1, so these are 3s, they're the same. However, this is 1 to 2, this is 1 to 2, so it's going to be twice as much as the 3, which is 6. Hopefully all that makes sense, okay? Now, if we have initial amounts and we have change, we can figure out the equilibrium position. So 9 minus 6 for the change is going to tell us that this is going to remain at 3, okay? This starts at 5, and we go down 3, this is going to be 2. And if this starts at 0 and it goes up 6, it's going to be 6, okay? So we have these equilibrium positions. We have the concentrations at equilibrium. All we need to do is to plug that in to the equilibrium expression, okay? If you don't know how to do the equilibrium expression, this is in a previous video, okay? So to do the equilibrium position, it's the products over the reactants. So it's going to be C and D, and their coefficients are the exponents. So it should look something like that. And then that's over the reactants, A and B. And that's going to be to the appropriate coefficients. Uh, to the exponents. Okay, so we got something like this for the equilibrium expression. And then all we do is plug in the numbers. So we got 3 and 6 for C and D respectively. 3 and 6 respectively. And then A and B is 3 and 2. 3 and 2. Of course, we have an exponent right here. Okay, so if you plug this in your calculator, you're going to get the number 6. If you want to see how this is worked out kind of like logically, this 3 is going to cancel out that exponent. 3 times 2 it ends up being 6. And this 6 will cancel out one of these 6s. So this all comes out to an equilibrium constant of 6. Okay, So that's how you use an ice chart to calculate equilibrium uh, positions. And then you plug those equilibrium positions into your equilibrium expression to figure out what the value of your equilibrium constant is, okay? If you found this content helpful, please give it a like and subscribe. The next video is going to be just like this, but just a little bit harder.